So the two number one picks, obviously Jack Hughes being the big name, but also Nico Heischer. Mm. Um, what do you, what, how do you think they will develop this season under, under Lindy Ruff and with Heischer specifically? Because obviously Hughes is a great prospect. We know yeah. that. Um, is, is it kind of like a fringe type of guy because he has really struggled so far the first three years? And Hughes, what kind of belief can you see? Because we know the potential that he has. Yeah, I, I know Heischer is not playing right now. He, he, had a, he suffered a, a, an off-ice leg injury before, before training camp. So he hasn't played yet. I, th- I think they expect him to play either this week or the following week. Uh, but Hughes, I've been really impressed by him. And I expected him to have a bounce back year, uh, considering this last season was kind of a disappointment for his rookie season. He only scored 21 points in, in uh, so what, 66 games. Uh, had a little bit of a disappointment. But it was his first year. You're, you're going you're gonna to struggle in your first year in the league, no matter how – how good you were. You're the number one pick in the league. Okay. You're still going to struggle. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, that's, that's just, that's growing pains. Mm-hmm. It's growing pains in any league, but from what I understand he, he built a lot of the muscle. He, he became stronger and it was evidence in the first two, couple, couple games. He has three, he's got three assists in his first two games and he's, he's, he's possessing the puck. Uh, you know, the, one of the interesting factoids from, uh, from Saturday's game, I think in the first two periods, uh, he had the most ice time. He hit the puck the longest in the Bruins off the, in the Bruins zone, in the Bruins defensive zone. So when the Devils are on offense, and he's on the he's on the ice, he's going to have the puck the most. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that's that Lindsay that Lindy Ruff uh, has predicated in his in his in his uh, in his in his teams and his systems is puck possession. And when you have your best player on the ice, and he has the puck he has the puck the most out of anybody on the ice, things are going to happen. Uh, and I, I'm I'm really excited that, to see his development. Uh, again, three three assists in two games. Uh, I just need to start scoring some goals, and you know, you know, he sure comes back. And think I think the Devils are in the up and up now. I don't know if you guys watch. Did you? Did you either you guys watch Saturday's game at all or catch the highlights? I didn't see it. Oh, you're talking about the Devils game? Devils Bruins. Yes. Yeah, I watched the game. Okay, so the one guy I'm high on, and I think after this game, after this game, everybody, else, every Devils fan should see. More of is Yegor Sh- Sh- uh, Sharangovich. He scored the game-winning goal. He don't ask me to won. pronounce his name because I'm very bad <laughs> I, at pronouncing. I just, names. I just did. For, I just did your homework for you, Errol. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> but with Heishier being out of the lineup, he's being inserted as a top six forward. And this is a guy who the Devils were very high on during training camp. He earned a spot. He was a, he was on the first line. Uh, of, of of Saturday's game and the scoring touch he had at the end of the game, less than two seconds left, he scores a game-winning goal. That, that showed you a lot about uh, about Lindy Ruff's faith in this in this kid. He's not even twenty-one years old, and and he gets the game-winning goal. He's very confident. He's a fast he's a fast skater. He can shoot the puck. Yeah, and, he, and again, he's super super confident. And when he's shooting, and he's playing with the top six forward. We are talking to the host of Belly Up Sports around for the weekend, Ryan McCarthy. Now going on to a little baseball. Uh, the New York Mets make one of the biggest trades uh, in, in a very long time. When, it, when we talk about the New York Mets, it's not the coupon Mets anymore. It's uh, Stevie Cohen's New York Mets. What were your thoughts when you heard that Francisco Lindor and Carrasco were going to get traded for practically a bag of balls? Were you surprised that the, the Mets made a trade like this? And, and where do you see these two players moving forward uh, are going to be as a New York Met? I, I wasn't surprised at all. Uh, Uncle Stevie Uncle Stevie is opening up the checkbook, and he's willing to spend some money to make this team a contender. Uh, I, I have another podcast with Belly Up Sports. It's called No Credentials Required. My co-host, uh, Corey, uh, if he's watching, uh, we discussed in the last episode about this trade. We talked about it a lot. And uh, Lindor and Carrasco, you know, Carrasco, they – he gives the Mets another arm, uh, especially with you – know, you've got four really good pitchers. you got DeGrom, who's your ace. you got uh, Syndergaard, who's coming back this year. You've got uh, Stroman. And now you've got Carrasco, uh, who who has playoff experience, knows how to pitch in the playoffs. And you can be a difference maker. Now Lindor gives the Mets more offense. You're not going to rely have to rely on Pete Alonzo all the time for the big bat to get a, a home run at a, at a timely, in a timely fashion. Now you have Francisco Lindor, uh, another big bat who can, who can, who can bring in, who can drive in runs. Uh, and I guess he's pretty solid defensively too. Uh, from what I understand, uh, he's, he's still in his, I think his late 20, mid late twenties, 
Lindor, I, I Lindor is 27 years old. He's 27. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's his late 20s. I think if he can prove that he can play at the same level in New York, in Queens, as he did back in Cleveland, I think he's earned himself a nice, hefty contract next season. He's going to earn it no matter what. He's getting a $300 million contract. No matter if he plays well or he doesn't. If he doesn't get it from the Mets, he'll get it from somebody else. Yeah. Somebody is going to give him $300 million. He's one of the top seven, top eight uh, players in the major leagues. He's going to get a lot of money. He's going to get yeah. a lot of money. So you being a Yankees fan, um, there are a lot of Yankee fans that were complaining that the Mets did get Francisco Lindor. And I mean, it's not an obvious need with the offense because the Yankees offense has a lot of talent on it. But would you have considered maybe trading for Francisco Lindor if you knew that Cleveland was also packaging Don't Carrasco, say yes. Don't packaging you Carrasco say yes. in the deal where the Yankees <laughs> Don't you say yes. pitching. No, I, I think I think the Yankees I, I think the Yankees have a lot on their farm system that they're they're waiting for those kids to come up as soon as a lot of these other guys uh, either get traded away or they leave for free agency. I just had the feeling the Mets were going to get them overall. I mean, if the Yankees got them, you know, whatever. You know, they, can, they have a lot of prospects that can deal for them. But I, I think I think the Yankees have enough already. They got they've got uh, they got they they signed re-signed Lemayhew. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Yeah, you know, uh, the crisis averted there. <laughs> yes. DJ Lemayhew was a big part of this offseason. If the Yankees did not sign DJ Lemayhew, that it would have been a lost. Uh, off season, they they signed DJ Lemayo. They probably re redid the whole when it comes to the salary cap. I mean, just think about it. The Yankees overpaid a lot of players in the old, in the olden days. They did. Uh, George Steinbrenner. Now you look at the the complete change because of COVID nineteen and the money situation. They they really changed the the whole circle of what you're going to pay guys. They they gave yeah. them more years, less money on the top. Yeah, they had a bargain. So, Six, six years, $90 million to a guy that won a batting title who was one of the top three, top four players in baseball for the last two seasons. In my eyes, they stole him. And and to me, when you look at DJ LeMayo to Francisco Lindor, I mean, who would you rather want? As a Yankee fan, not just not being a Yankee fan, as a person that loves baseball, anybody will tell you DJ LeMayo is a better all-around hitter than Francisco Lindor. I'm, I I want DJ LeMayo. That's what I want, even though Lindor is the younger guy and he's the shortstop. Uh, both guys are sensational defensive players, and and both guys are very good hitters. But DJ LeMayo has proven that he can hit in the playoffs, and Lindor hasn't yet. So we have to see Lindor, Lindor do it consistently in New York. We have already seen DJ LeMayo do it in New York. So mm-hmm. that's going to be the secret to what Francisco Lindor, if he wants to put himself on a pedestal, uh, as uh, one of the best baseball players in New York, well, he's got to do it in New York. And if he doesn't do it in New York, New York, and we've seen a lot of great players come here in New York and couldn't solve, uh, for some reason, the New York fans. They couldn't solve it. We've seen pitchers. We've seen hitters. Uh, guys that were good everywhere else, but they come here to New York, but for some reason they can't hit New York. Especially Mets free agent outfielders. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, we'll see what Francisco Lindor does when when he's under pressure playing in New York, and the Mets go on a slide where they they lose three or four games in a row. And and, and Mets fans are going to be on him because he's not hitting the ball. That's when yep. we see who Francisco Lindor is and how he can take the pressure being in New York. Because you know, and I know as a New York fan, that mm-hmm. the press will feast on him if he doesn't. This oh, isn't absolutely. Cleveland. This isn't Cleveland. Nope. I I definitely I, I agree. Yeah. I mean I mean it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what Lindor does in in coming up in the in the, in the regular season. Uh, spring training starts in, uh, starts next month. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited for spring training to come along. I mean I've got hockey season, but you know it having. Spring training, it's that expectation of, of, hey, spring's right around the corner. Here comes baseball. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what Lindor does. Does he, does he wilt under the pressure like a lot of these other, other, other ball players have done in the past? I mean, as you said, Errol, New York's a, the biggest, it's the biggest market in the United States, a media market in the United States in terms of sports, arguably the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to be fascinated. That's going to be one of the biggest storylines and one of the biggest narratives coming into the, Going into the season is whether or not Lindor and even Carrasco. Yeah. Carrasco's the, the the guy that in that trade that was probably the best part of the trade. You getting a starter as good as Carrasco, who's really a number two. He was the number two for Cleveland all those years uh, behind uh, Kluber. Uh, he he was the second guy, and now Carrasco's going to Mets where he's the third or fourth guy. So. That bodes well for the Mets when they get Noah Syndergaard bats. I mean, that pitching staff is going to be stacked. They're going to be a dangerous team, especially when you're in a division with the Braves. We're yeah. a very dangerous team. So, absolutely. 
the Absolutely. Mets were in a very good position. Before we let you go, my friend, why don't yes. you tell the fans how they can find you and how they can listen to your show on Belly Up Sports? Okay, so I've got two shows. Uh, as you, as I mentioned before, I've got no, Around for the Weekend, which is most, which is every Friday at six thirty p.m. Uh, you can find me on face. You can find it on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, slash Periscope, on YouTube. Uh, just search for Around for the Weekend. Uh, you can also listen to my podcast. No credentials required. We drop episodes every Wednesday or every Thursday. Uh, you can find Around for the Weekend. You can find at Belly Up AFT, AFTW. Uh, that's the Twitter account. Uh, no credentials required. Is Belly Up NCR. If you want to. Have a chat. If you want to chat with me casually as a sports fan, you can find me on Twitter at who is Ryan MCC. And I just want to let you know one of the biggest, one of the, uh, the the key components of my show is that I pick a beer and I drink it along. It's like it's like sitting sitting in a bar, sitting in <laughs> a sports bar. You know, uh, with COVID, you can't really sit at a sports bar and just have a drink with somebody. So what I usually do is I grab my mason my mason jar, which is my I call it my co star, <laughs> and I you know I feature a local beer or a New York beer, which I'm going to drink right now. It's a uh, wrench from Industrial Arts. It's a uh, Northeast India Pale Ale. They're <laughs> they're located right by Harrison, right off exit 16 of the throughway. So you know what you do you you do it with you do it with beer. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring soap. On this show, I'm going to have all different kinds of soap, and whichever one everybody <laughs> likes to smell, I'm going to put it in a bag and beat Speedy with it, and that's what we'll do. On, we'll do that on live radio. <laughs> you guys get to pick on what kind of soap I beat Speedy with. What do you think, Speedy? You like that? I don't know how that correlates at all, but okay. <laughs> you, but you, well, I know how it correlates, Speedy. You get to choose the sock. <laughs> that's so true. So not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to smell it too, even if it's on my feet. Oh. <laughs> also not worth it. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for coming on. We definitely want to get you back on the show. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us, gentlemen. Errol, Speedy. Keep appreciate listening. Keep listening to the show tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun with our next guest, and I'm sure you're going to hear some crazy outlandish things uh, moving forward on this show. Awesome. Looking forward to it, gentlemen. Thanks again. Enjoy appreciate your beer, it. my friend. Enjoy the beer. Yeah. <laughs>